What's up, y'all? It's Celeste. I'm now one year and one month post-op for top surgery, and when I was making my one year post-op video, I posted on Instagram asking if anybody had any questions or things you wanted me to cover in that video, and I got so many responses that instead of answering them in that video, I actually decided to make a totally separate top surgery Q&A. So that's what this is. And after attempting to make it a few times, I realized that I actually need to split it into two parts because there are so many questions and they're really good questions. So I want to be able to answer them as fully as possible. Um, so this is going to be part one and then part two will be coming fairly soon. Before I get started, I want to let you know that I have a top surgery playlist, which I will be linking up there that has all my videos related to top surgery. So if the things that I answer in this video, if you want to know more about those, if you want to go more in depth, if you want to see my progress throughout my whole top surgery recovery journey from before I had top surgery to now, uh, you can go through and look at all of those and that will probably be the best way you can kind of catch up on everything that I've posted or shared about top surgery on here. So all these questions are from Instagram. I did have one person on Facebook ask a question, but it kind of ties into another one. So I'm going to just kind of roll it in with that. And um, I'm not going to try to pronounce everybody's username because I probably will get a whole bunch of them wrong if I try to do that. Um, so I'm just gonna put the questions up on the screen and you can see the usernames there. Um, there are a few people who didn't want me to put their username, so those won't be there, but for everybody else it'll be there and I will also put them in the description. So um, thank you so much to everybody who sent in questions and topics for me to talk about with this because they are really good things and I know a lot of other people are wondering these things too. So hopefully this will be helpful to you and everybody. First question is really easy. Has the raised part of your scar gone down at all? So for those who don't know, there was a section on my left scar toward the center of my chest that was much thicker and firmer and kind of knotted underneath. And after a lot of massaging and just giving it time, um, it has gone down almost completely at this point. It has softened and flattened and there's very little difference now from my left side to my right side. It is like you can see a difference and you can feel a difference if you look or feel closely, but for the most part, it no longer has that raised thick appearance anymore. Next, somebody wanted me to do a compare and contrast of scar care products I've tried, how easy they are to use, and how effective I found them. I didn't actually do a whole lot of experimenting with scar care products, like using a lot of different things. I pretty much decided what I was going to use ahead of time, got the stuff, and then just used it. Um, so the only things I really used were rosehip seed oil for massaging my scars. And the reason that I picked rosehip seed oil in particular is because it is supposed to be good for scars. It's supposed to make them lighten faster and make them heal faster. So that's why I picked that. I don't know if it really matters that much what kind of oil you use, but I figured I might as well use that since it's supposed to be good for scars. Um, and the kind that I got comes in a little bottle um, with a dropper. So you basically just take, uh, take the dropper and just put a little bit of oil on your fingertips and just use that to massage and you can just keep adding oil as you go. So it's very easy to use. Um, the kind that I got originally was in a pretty small bottle. So later on I got an, a different kind, different brand um, that was in a larger amount. So I'm gonna link both of those in the description. Although the last time I checked the larger size was not available on Amazon, but I'll go ahead and link both of them just so you know what I used. Um, so hopefully that'll be helpful. I also used silicone strips on my scars. I originally got these Mepiform scar sheets and just cut them into strips to use. Um, but later on, I found out that there's also this Mepitac tape, which is the same company that makes both of them. And um, it's basically the same stuff. I'm pretty sure it's like pretty much the same, but uh, it just comes in a tape format. So it's a little bit easier to use. You don't have to cut as much. You just cut the length that you want. I guess if you wanted to be really thrifty, you could cut this lengthwise depending on how wide your scars are, but I just used the whole width of it. Um, and this is supposed to be a single use tape, um, but I was able to make it last for like one to two weeks most of the time. I think once or twice I even got it to be like two and a half weeks. It really just depended on how humid it was and like how much I was sweating and stuff. But um, basically I would just wear it for like the day and night. And then in the morning I would take them off, wash them, leave them out to dry. Um, do my workout and shower and so on. And then by that time, they would pretty much be dry. So I would be able to put them back on. And by doing that, just washing them once a day, um, I was able, like I said, to make them last a lot longer than one day. If I were gonna pick between these, I would just go ahead and get the tape because it's just a lot easier to use. Um, so 
That's what I would recommend. Next question is, is there anything that you wish you did differently with the post-op care? Um, not really. I'm pretty happy with how things have turned out and I'm pretty confident in what I did for my recovery and everything. Um, maybe the only thing I would consider is, well, for one thing, I would probably just jump to using the, the Mepitac tape and just skip the scar sheets. But um, other than that, I would maybe the first few weeks have tried to move a little bit more in sort of my torso area, like my chest area. Um, I was trying really hard not to stretch anything, not to raise my arms and not to do anything like that would stretch the scars, but also that would like make me hurt more or anything like that, which was good. But after a few weeks when I did start to move, I felt very constricted and just kind of like very tight in here. So I would maybe just do like even just a little bit of like, I don't know, like rolling my shoulders or something like something to just kind of get things moving a little bit more here. But I mean, it turned out fine regardless. That's just something I maybe would try if I were to do this all over again with the knowledge that I have now. So that's pretty much it. Next is, I'd love to know how the sensitivity all over your chest area changes as it heals. Um, so sensitivity is one of those things that really varies a lot from person to person because everybody's body is different, but also like differences between surgeons, between the amount of tissue removed, between like where incisions are done, etc. like can really affect a lot like how, what areas are numb, what areas have more sensation, what areas we gain sensation faster and all that kind of thing. So um, I can only speak from my experience here. Personally, um, I basically had like certain areas of my chest that were numb. Um, immediately after surgery, a lot of the area was pretty numb, um, although I did have pain at the same time. Um, but even as the pain lessened, I still had parts of my chest that had more of a dulled sensation. I never really had areas where like I couldn't feel anything at all, but it was more like when I would press on my skin, I could feel the pressure, but it also felt dulled and it felt kind of like if your foot falls asleep or something. It wasn't really tingly, but it was just like the feeling of not really getting the feedback you're used to getting by touching parts of your body. Um, so over time, that came back um, pretty much like at the same time as the pain was lessening. So that kind of worked out pretty well. I mean, I did have some pain, but for the most part, um, the numbness took several months to go away completely. I would say it was maybe around like the five month mark or so that it was pretty much completely gone. I know in my four month video, I still had a little bit of numbness, especially around my areoli and sort of like between them and my and my scars, my um, in, like incision scars. Um, so that area took the longest, but I think it was pretty soon after that that I got it back everywhere pretty much. Um, as far as sensation of my nipples, because I know that's a question a lot of people have, um, I do have sensation there. I have like, it's pretty much like, like when I touch that area, it's pretty much like touching any part of my skin. It's not hypersensitive anymore like it was pre-op. Um, but if I put pressure on there, it's a little bit more tender. And I think that's probably largely because of the fact that there was like, surgery done under there. So it still is like a little bit, um, there's probably a little bit of scar tissue and it's just like a little bit more tender there than it, it, than it would be in other areas, but it's not painful or anything. It's just, it feels a little bit different from where I would press on like my arm or something like that. Next question is what was the hardest part of the journey and why? The hardest part was actually the part before I had top surgery when I was still planning to have it, when I was trying to save up enough money to have it and when I didn't have a date set yet or anything. And it was just kind of this nebulous thing for the future that I wanted to have happen, but had no real like tangible, like finish line that I could point to that was like a year from now, I'll have had top surgery. It was just like this hope that I had. Um, so there were things after I had top surgery, like when I was in recovery that were somewhat difficult or frustrating or inconvenient um, or even painful, but those things I knew at the time I was dealing with them that it was like once they went away I would have this chest that I was happy with whereas ahead of time it was like I was pretty confident that I would eventually have top surgery but there were very many times um, that I did get really discouraged and felt like it was never going to happen and it was just like it was just like there just wasn't as much to hold on to for that. So that was definitely the, the toughest part for me. So it turns out Tom Petty had it right. The is the 
Next is, I'm really curious about the amount of help you need to have post-op. Should you have someone with you and for how long? I absolutely 100% needed somebody uh, with me after top surgery. I know there are people who take care of themselves and who don't have a caretaker. Um, I am very impressed by those people because there's no way I would have been able to do that. My mom took care of me the first week and then once I got home, Jason, my partner, um, took care of me like for several weeks after that. I mean, I didn't need as much help by that point, but there were things that I did need. I needed a lot more help than I usually would. So for the first week post-op, I was in a rental house with my mom and she had to take care of me. She had to get like food for me and cook for me. Um, I couldn't even open the refrigerator. Um, I was able to do a lot of hygiene things by myself, especially like things related to my head and face. Like I could put my contacts in, I could wash my face, I could brush my teeth. I could do all that immediately after surgery, like from the first night. But um, I needed her to help me clean my body with baby wipes and... Um, things like that and help me get dressed because I couldn't pull all my clothes off and on. She also emptied my drains for me. Um, that would have been pretty difficult for me to do by myself because it does take some force to strip the drain lines. Um, all of these things, like if I had to do them by myself, I probably could have done some of them. I don't think I could have, could have done, like there were certain things that I could not do. There were other things that I, if I had forced myself, I would have been able to do them, like opening the refrigerator. If I pulled hard enough, I would have. But I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to do things that really strained me that felt painful when I started to do them. And so you can get away with taking care of yourself for the most part, but I would recommend having somebody there because for one thing, it's a lot easier on your body. It's also a lot easier on your emotional state after you've just gone through this big, traumatic surgery um, and your body is healing and your brain is still trying to catch up to what's happened and everything um, and even the effects of the anesthesia can have sort of emotional effects on you. Um, it's just easier not to have to worry about all this stuff and and to be like trying to manage everything at the same time like even keeping track of your medications and stuff like it doesn't seem like it would be that hard but it's just a lot to a lot of different things a lot of new things to be worrying about that week and having somebody else to share that with really helps a lot. And even after I got home, I needed a lot of help. Um, there were things that I couldn't reach. There were things that I couldn't lift because I wasn't supposed to be lifting more than like five pounds for several weeks. Um, and just a lot of things. And what was kind of interesting was once I got home, during the time that I was in the rental house that week, um, I progressively was able to do more and more things. But once I got home, there were certain things that I was able to do at the rental house that I suddenly wasn't able to do at home just because of the difference in our house. Like for example, at the rental house, after a few days, I was able to turn the faucet on, on and off by myself because it's like the lever kind that you just can push up. So I was able to like put my hands under it and just kind of like push up without raising my arms up. Um, and it was easy, but at home, we have the kind where you have to like grab it and pull and it's actually kind of hard to pull. So that was a lot more difficult for me. So I actually needed Jason to come turn the faucet off on and off for me every time I went to the bathroom, every time I was cooking or anything. Um, like I wasn't really able to cook right away anyway, but um, doing anything in the kitchen, I needed his help with. So there are a lot of things that might not seem like they're hard and maybe they won't be for you, um, but it's just hard to, it's just really hard to know ahead of time until you're actually trying to do the things. There are a lot of things that you don't think will be that hard and then you start to do them and you're like, oh, this is actually like, I actually reach more for this than I thought or like this actually takes more force than I realized because you're so used to having the ability to do those things that when you suddenly don't, it, it really can be surprising what you can and can't do. Um, that can go the other way too. Like there were things that I was able to do right away that I didn't necessarily know that I would be able to. So it really just varies a lot. Um, but I do recommend having somebody available to help you with things because you just like, and especially like the first few days, because if something did go wrong, if you did uh, overexert yourself, or if just you had some random complication or something, it would be good to have somebody there with you. So it's not like you're completely bedridden for like weeks on end or anything. Like the next day I was able to walk around and like use the computer and like do all kinds of stuff, but there was a lot of stuff that I did need help with. So it just kind of like, it's just kind of a balance of uh, independence and dependence that uh, over time lessens and 
go skews in the direction of independence, but it does take a while to get completely independent again. Next question is, could you please talk about what changes you saw while you were on T and what you saw when you were not on T? So for those who haven't followed my weird and convoluted journey, um, I've been on and off T a few times and it's a little bit confusing. So I actually made a timeline which will help you sort of visualize what happened. Um, I was on low dose T for a few months, then I was off of it, then I had top surgery. Then a few months later, I went back on T for about five months, went off of it for a month, went back on for almost a month, and now I've been back off of it for several months. So basically what you need to know is that at the time I had top surgery, I was not on T and I had only been on it for a very short time on a very low dose. So I never had any body changes during that period. Um, so in my opinion, for the purposes of my surgery, from the results that I had, from the way my body responded to the surgery, all of those things, I was essentially pre-T at the time that I had surgery. Even though I had taken some T, I was basically pre-T and I was not on T at the time. Um, and the first few months of my recovery, I was also not on T. So during all that time, like that's all basically like pre-T stuff. Um, from about the three month mark to about the nine month mark was when I was back on T at a full dose, um, kind of varying dosage, but not at the low dose that I had been on. So basically for that period of my recovery, um, you can view me as being on T and then anything since then was off of tea. So I know that's still a little bit confusing. So the only difference I really noticed myself was that while I was on tea, it was easier for me to gain muscle. And so my pecs were a little bit more defined at that time. All it really did was like make it a little bit easier for me to gain pec development. Um, it's not like it magically gave it to me. It's not like that's the only way you can have pec development. It just made it a little bit easier. And it wasn't even that big of a difference, but that's about the only thing that I really noticed as a difference um, when I was on and off T as far as my top surgery results. What was it like to touch your chest for the first time post-op? It was really weird um, because that whole area felt very vulnerable and just exposed. And I was trying to be very cautious with it. And it also was still, you know, very tender and, and somewhat swollen and just kind of like, I don't know, weird, the weirdly sensitive, like there were parts of it that were kind of numb, but it still overall felt just like more touchy and, uh, and just kind of weird. So it wasn't like a negative experience to touch it. Um, it wasn't like I, it, it wasn't like it all hurt or that it was totally scary or anything, but it just, um, it just was very strange and kind of almost like alien feeling, not like space alien, but just like it was something that I wasn't used to being my body. So it just took a little bit of getting used to, but not in a bad way. It just was kind of unfamiliar at first, but it didn't take too long for me to start getting used to it. These two questions kind of go together. I was curious if you still experience any post-op pain, like do your scars or nipples ever hurt? Do you have nerve pain sometimes? If so, how do you manage these things? And then do you get phantom pains? Um, so I really don't get any pain anymore. I pretty much stopped having any pain somewhere between, I would say three and four months post-op. Um, I know in my three months post-op video, I talked about that I didn't really have pain much anymore. And then I kind of like stretched a little bit and I was like, oh yeah, that actually hurt a little bit. So it was sometime shortly after that, I would say that I stopped having pain. Um, I think after that, there were maybe a few times, there have maybe been a few times that I have gotten a little bit of pain doing things that were more like exerting myself more or stretching a lot more. But I would say those times are more about the fact that I'm doing something my body isn't used to and not directly from the surgery itself. So as far as just like suddenly getting shooting pains or like things being more sensitive in that area, really haven't had that for many months at this point. Um, not counting the fact that I just had a revision a few days ago. So that part is, is a little bit sore, but, um, as far as the, the original surgery, um, I don't really have any pain anymore. My scars itch a little bit sometimes. Um, but that's just part of like the normal scar healing process. I, I have scars that are like 20 years old that still itch occasionally. So that's just a weird scar thing. Um, and as far as phantom pains, I don't get those and I've never had any really like phantom 
feelings at all about my chest. Um, I know that is something some other people have, have dealt with where they feel like they can feel what used to be there, um, even though it's not there anymore. And I haven't really had that. So that's it for part one of the top surgery Q and A. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. Part two will be coming soon. So you can subscribe and hit the notification bell. So you'll be notified as soon as I do post it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.